Thanks. Welcome back to another video on another 190 build, <laughs> which we are starting. This is a brand new project. This is in collaboration with Ash Thorpe, Carlos Color Sponge, and us, Trick Factory Customs. If this is the first time checking our channel out, we build custom cars like this one. We are currently about to scan this 190E. We're designing a whole new car. And so we need the 190 base as it is right now as the starting point for what they're gonna build off of. If you don't already know Ash and Carlos from Make Haste Corp, they're amazing friends we've gotten to know over the last couple of years and they're insanely talented designers and artists. They approached us with this idea for a car and we immediately said yes to bring in their vision to life. We love Mercedes 190Es and we previously built a 190E Evo 2 with a twin turbo LS making 1500 horsepower. But this time we're taking things even further. We're building the most ambitious car we've ever attempted here at Trick Factory with a full tube chassis, custom suspension, a full carbon body and the crown jewel, a mid-engine V12 and a whole lot more. And we're taking you along for the journey from concept to reality. So we sprayed some lava reflective spray now, made some dots now, and then we just started scanning. At the end of the day, we're going to have a whole 190 on the computer. So are we scanning just the whole exterior or are we going inside as well? From what I've been communicating, I think we're just doing the exterior first so that the guys over there could actually design the body kit with actual physical dimensions. Yes. Compiling all the mesh data that we took. This is all the scan files that we took last week. And then now we're gonna align them together. So as you can see, like I've started aligning a few of these already. Well, it's a bunch of different meshes coming together. And this is the one that's gonna be aligned next pretty much, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So for example, like this headlight is missing, but this, this scan has a headlight fully scanned. Mm -hmm. So if we just click align, and it does that automatically? Yes. That's pretty sick. Just You just do that until we get a full car and then uh, compile it and then convert it into a mesh at the end. We sent the scan files off to Ash and Carlos at Make Haste so they could start creating a dimensionally accurate model of the new 190E body. That meant it was time for us to go pick up our 190E donor car because the car we scanned was a customer car and we definitely weren't expecting what we found when we showed up. I sourced the 190, we basically needed chassis. I wasn't looking for a great car, so we more or less just needed the shell. So I spent some time digging around. I happened to find this one on Craigslist. And then when I came out to look at it, to my surprise, there's a couple RWBs in the driveway, a Bentley Turbo R, a 280CE, and he has a bunch of 190s. So of course we became fast friends. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now we're here to the I assume as soon as we roll this away, he probably already has something about to take its spot. So we're going to help him lighten the load a little bit. Once we got the 190E loaded into the trailer, we got a little distracted. We had to check out some of the seller's other cars, which were amazing. V8, six and three quarter liter giant turbo. Let's get a look at this. That's your name written all over it. <laughs> I know. And it's for really sale. Cool. Oh, that looks, that looks huge cool. turbo. Dang. Rob, are you interested in this Bentley? Yeah, very much so. Yo. I would daily this thing for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of potential with this car. Don't get any ideas, Rob. We have too oh, many projects I already. A lot of ideas. Already. <laughs> I know. Imagine this thing on like okay. eggs. Oh. Just like slam to the ground with some 20s. Oh. It's not bad. There's a little love. I know what condition is. Are you going to be a Bentley owner? Maybe. <laughs> this thing is nice. It's nice. It just needs some wheels. Yeah, this thing slammed on some nice wheels. HREs. Hopefully sponsored. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, is that your little new home for your cars? I'll let you know. <laughs> we finally headed back to the shop to dive deeper into the project and honestly to take a moment to really think about what we had just gotten ourselves into with this build. Excited? 
excited. Yeah, somewhat. I just see a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm excited. Yeah. What's not to be excited about? I'm gonna build a crazy car in a very short amount of time. No big deal. I mentioned that I was going to be getting it to build a project, and so he gutted it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made your job easy. <laughs> well, no, you can't sell a bunch of the stuff to recoup costs. Oh, no. That's one thing every 190 enthusiast should know, that if you tend to own or build one, you need at least three to keep it on the road. <laughs> or be prepared to wait three months for parts. This is the one you want to do swaps on. Why? It has a bolt-in cost number for Rad's core piece. Oh. 24 hours later. This is an M120 V12. It's going in our next project. Originally came out of an SL600, so today we're gonna blow the trans off, get on an engine stand, then we gotta remove some bits and pieces because we're gonna go ITBs with it, so we gotta get manifolds off. Alex is gonna come and scan it, and then we're gonna gut the body, and then place this in digital space and start connecting dots. Sweet. So, yeah, it's bigger than I remember it being. That's what she said. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're staying uh, naturally aspirated with this car? Yes. Noise. So. And are we building the engine in any way or no? Uh, I don't think so. Because okay. it makes plenty of power. We want to maintain its reliability. So we'll go through and make sure everything's good. But as far as bottom end modifications. I don't think we're gonna need any for what we got going on because our car is gonna be so light. So if we can retain OEM levels of reliability, I think that's what we're gonna stick to. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna put this in 3D space because we're building a full custom chassis. Chassis. Yeah. So we gotta figure out where this goes so we can start making plans and connecting all the other dots. The placement is gonna be more of a front mid configurations because we have a huge air duct coming out of the hood that's going to kind of dictate where the front of the engine is placed relative to how the hood shape is. Right now we're playing around with the idea of running a transaxle with a pork tube setup. Our goal for today is to take all of the intake plenum, exhaust manifolds off, we're going to get those off and we're going to start finalizing our design. Six into two into one exhaust header set up on this. So you can kind of tell on the, and from the factory, they did um, a three into one times two for each bank of, of six. But we're gonna do the exact same thing on this. We're gonna do a step header design on this. This is a very iconic intake manifold, isn't it? Yeah. When you see that, you just know what it is, yeah. We're getting rid of it. So this engine, does it, is it like one like the Toyota Century V12 that it has two of everything? Yeah. Oh gosh, two ECs. Essentially two M104s yeah. put together. So in the car it had like four ECUs. Four ECUs on this car, Ooh. four. Oh. Yeah. So it's basically, yeah, two V6s. That's wild. So our two C inline sixes. Yeah. We're doing away with all that. Like we're, we're stripping all of that off of this car. We reached out to Haltech and they be, they wanted to come on board with this project. We're super grateful for that. The Nexus. R5. R5. The Nexus R5 is BTU. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This thing's incredible. It's uh, perfectly capable for this V12. Yeah. In our application, it's going to be great. So we're really happy about that. It's super well versed in choosing the wrong ECU. <laughs> <laughs> this time we chose the right ECU. Mm -hmm. So we don't anticipate having end crops. Yeah, because with the Haltech thing, the Haltech ECU, it allows you to pretty much run a V12. It's, yeah, it's one of the only ones that seems like it's fully capable of doing everything we need it to do. 
But yeah, you can instantly see just how wide this motor is compared to an LS. Like, it's literally almost double the footprint that it takes. It's bigger in every way than an LS, but not super significant. I mean, it's a V12. It's got four more cylinders. Who can't appreciate the sound of the M120 with a proper, you know, proper equal length headers? Yeah, open exhaust system. It, there's, there's, there's a few videos out there that, that exist and those are what kind of got us to choose this. Just listening to this engine screaming is worth every ounce of effort. Have we decided what route we're going with transmission wise? Uh, I think, I don't know if we have, have we? I don't think we're still, I think we're, we're, we're working on that. We gotta mat some things out and see how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. So it might be torque tube, transaxle, I don't know. So are you just gonna strip it down to just the long block or no? Well, we gotta get the manifolds off because this doesn't really suit our plans. We're not messing with the accessories in any way. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can retain all of them. Yeah. Except for the smog pump. And AC. We're keeping AC. Oh, you yeah, have that AC, man. <laughs> Build a car and then make it miserable to be in. <laughs> because race car, come on. Oh, that used to be race car. <laughs> now they got air conditioned seats and cars and like people. They got suits. That's true. Race cars have come a long ways. <laughs> Our wall mounted giraffe vacuum cleaner. And I'm going to suck up all this mouse poop. We also want to take a moment to thank all of our partners on this project. Without their support, this build wouldn't be possible. Throughout this series, we'll be highlighting how we're using their products to bring this car to life. I'm going to remove these exhaust manifolds. Are you cutting all the wires? Yeah, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do as I say, not as I do. I know, you tell me not to cut any of my wires and you're just yeah. sending it. I'm a little more advanced. <laughs> I know exactly what I need to do. So if you don't, then I recommend not cutting your wires until you know what you need to do. Yeah. But since we're going to be replacing, we're replacing everything, so. But like all this distributor system is all going because we're going to do coil on plug. So a lot of this is going to get deleted anyways. Yeah. So we'll probably need cam sensors. That's about it. Temperature sensors. But all this will. There's four bolts on each, on each port. 48 bolts, studs. 48 studs on this thing. More than 50% of those studs are in hard to reach areas. Of course. Of course they are. Why would they make why, it easy? Why would they make it easy to their credit? It's not how often you need to take your manifolds off right that's now. That's true. There's some more rat poop, so that's nice. <laughs> this is only gonna take me a lifetime. Get ready for some steady gas smell. We're not just going to toss this in the car as is. We're going to go through it and make sure that everything is exactly what it's supposed to be. Every seal is, is good, it's fresh. Make sure there's no major internal issues with this engine. So we're not just going to toss it in, you know, clean it up, toss it in. We're going to go through it. After the guys finished stripping the unnecessary parts of the M120 engine, it was time to degrease and clean it so we could get it ready for 3D scanning. Yeah, 
We'll be scanning the engine and other key components in the next video so we can start the CAD design for the chassis. So stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.